Welcome to College Sports Conversations. I'm your host, Hayden Gibson, and today we're excited to bring you a Division II focus episode. On July 1st, the NCAA released an interim NIL policy that allows student athletes to benefit from their name, image, and likeness. Institutions have begun creating educational resources to offer their student athletes on campus. Today, I'm joined by Missouri Southern State's Director of Athletics, Rob Mallory, and NCAA's Director of Academic and Membership Affairs, Stephanie Quigg. Rob began his role at Missouri Southern State on July 1st of this year, and Stephanie has been with the NCAA for the past 18 years. I'll begin by asking Rob several questions from an institutional perspective before turning to Stephanie to ask about the National Office's educational resources. Rob and Stephanie, thank you for joining me today. Aiden, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Absolutely. Okay, let's get right into it. NIL has created new opportunities for student athletes. What kind of feedback have you received from your student athletes so far? Uh, I think it's been a healthy mix of excitement and curiosity. You know, we, we certainly have some student athletes that have been fairly aggressive in trying to pursue and find these opportunities for themselves. But a lot of them are asking questions and really just trying to figure out exactly what they can do uh, and the best way to approach it on their end. Absolutely. And that's the good thing is there's kind of a world of unknown. There's so many different possibilities to go with it. And so building off of that, how do you plan to educate your student athletes on these new opportunities on your campus? Yeah, so here at Missouri Southern, we've been talking about the three E's of NIL, uh, educate, empower, and equip. You know, we want to educate our student athletes on this new era in college athletics and what it means for them. We want to empower them to take advantage of those opportunities but we wanna make sure we equip them with the tools necessary to be successful when they go out to do that. So, you know, we've rooted a lot of our initial education on the compliance side, uh, using those preseason meetings to, to really make sure our student athletes understand uh, what NIL is, what it isn't, what pitfalls still exist out there, uh, what's required under our Missouri state law, what's required under institutional policy, and then how we can help them. Um, but. That's, that's kind of where we've started. I think the plan for us is to expand from there, both in the scope of educational topics uh, and in the method of delivery. So for instance, you know, we'll use our compliance software throughout the year to send out information in smaller bytes, uh, maybe incorporate some videos. Uh, and then we'll certainly c- continue with some of the in-person presentations because we wanna make sure we hit all those different learning styles uh, that might exist within our student athlete population. So. Uh, And then we've also got a tremendous resource that's been provided to us through the MIAA um, and their partnership with Siegfried Bingham and their Empower You initiative, which is something that we'll certainly um, tap into to supplement our educational efforts on campus. Are you working with student athletes to get feedback on the type of educational resources that they need or want? So we haven't done that yet, but but the plan is to engage initially at least SAC um, and that, that leadership group in those conversations. I mean, honestly, we're all kind of figuring this thing out together um, to a large degree. So we didn't want to wait until we had that feedback uh, to start the educational outreach. Uh, but as we move through this, uh, you know, we're going to we're going to fail. That's just going to be part of it. Some of the stuff's not going to work to the degree we hope. Uh, but we'll take that feedback uh, in real time. We'll be intentional about getting that feedback and then we'll adjust as we move through it. But, you know, in, in a world like this, where there's so much unknown, trying and failing is just going to be part of it. Absolutely. And you touched on it 100% correctly, just going in it with that mindset that, okay, we're going to try some things. We're going to hope it works, but it might not. And that's okay too. And I think that's just really the important mindset that you want to have. Show your student athletes that we're all learning together, because like you said, it's a little bit of a world of the unknown. Absolutely. And how are you planning to implement these new resources? Are you partnering with any departments or individuals on campus? Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, I, I like to think of it. We're kind of t- we're t- we're looking at this from kind of a multi prong approach. Um, we certainly, first and foremost, want to leverage those resources that already exist on our campus, right? So Amanda Schmelzer, our compliance director, she's been all over this from a compliance and legal standpoint. Uh, Our faculty athletic rep, Dr. Jeff Zimmerman, is the dean of the Plaster College of Business here at Missouri Southern. So we want to tap into the knowledge base that that we know already exists within our faculty, uh, specifically in that area. You know, we're engaging with mental health counselors on campus because I do think that NIL brings some potential new mental health concerns uh, into play here. And then, you know, we've got alumni and friends outside the walls of campus, so to speak. 
uh, that we'll engage with in other areas, whether that be financial advising, taxation, marketing, personal branding, uh, or any other number of topics. And then honestly, at that point, we kind of look and where are the gaps and, and see if we still have gaps that we need to try to fill and explore the best way to do that, uh, whether that be looking into expanded community partnerships or uh, a third party vendor of some sort that might we might be able to plug into what we're doing. Uh, for us, the, the ultimate goal really is to roll all of this together into kind of an overall student athlete development program that we're trying to build here at Missouri Southern. That's great. And I think Division two institutions, maybe sometimes you're a little bit smaller, you have a smaller team. And so really connecting with the resources that are available on campus is so important during this time to make sure you're not tackling all of this by yourself, because that could be a little bit intimidating. Yeah. And so what are you personally looking forward to in the new NIL and college athletics landscape? Uh, yeah, I mean, even though it's it's a great unknown, I, I do think it's, it's a time of excitement. Um, and I see it as another way to engage with our student athletes um, and to enhance what we're already doing on campus. Uh, you know, our mission at Missouri Southern is to educate and graduate knowledgeable, responsible, successful global citizens. And I think NIL offers us just a new opportunity to do that, maybe in some areas where we weren't already doing it um, and on, on some topics that we weren't focused on before. Uh, so I, I think that's a, just a great opportunity for us uh, to enhance what we're already doing. And then, I mean, honestly, I do. I look forward, although it's a little scary, I look forward to seeing uh, creative and unique ways that our student athletes take advantage of these new opportunities. And one last question for you, Rob, before I turn over to Stephanie. What advice do you have for other Division II institutions who are working to create on-campus NIL educational resources? Uh, I, this is a whole new world for all of us, right? You know, we're, we're used to... Uh, structure and we're used to everybody kind of having the, the the same rule book in front of them and that doesn't really exist in NIL so I, I think what I would say is we're all trying to figure out the best way to do it um, don't wait until you think you have it figured out to start uh, you know as, as institutions of higher learning we have we all have access to resources at our fingertips on our individual campuses that I think can assist us in, in this new endeavor um, so so don't wait until you think you've got the, the perfect game plan because there is no perfect game plan right now um, so start with what you know, and, and as you and your student athletes learn more, you grow from there. We really appreciate all of the insight you gave, and so now I'll turn it over to Stephanie. Stephanie, can you please tell our listeners about the interim NIL policy educational resources that have been created? Sure. Hi, Hayden. Thank you so much for having me. So the Taking Action Name, Image, and Likeness link on the homepage of NCA.org has a lot of resources available to our membership that will really help them navigate the NIL landscape. One thing I do wanna point out is that all of the resources that have been developed are for our members across all three divisions of the association. There is one video though that is specific division to division two and I will highlight that for you. But getting into the actual resources themselves, they are available and applicable to everyone regardless of position on campus. But there are some resources that are specific to student athletes, compliance administrators, and our administrators in the financial aid office. So first off, we do provide the language of the NIL interim policy. There are a couple of documents that go with that. One is a key takeaways document that highlights the critical information for people to understand about the NIL interim policy. And there also is a quick guide available that is in an infographic format that hopefully will make it very easy for people to understand. For our compliance administrators, we do have a question and answer document that highlights several of the application and interpretive questions that we have received thus far that will help those compliance administrators as they're assisting our student athletes. We do have for student athletes specifically, a document that highlights the cycle that an individual may go through as they are engaging in NIL activities. I did also share that there is a document specific to financial aid administrators, and it is a document that outlines considerations that the financial aid office should take into account when dealing with a student athlete who participates in NIL activities. 
The final document, Hayden, that's available to the membership is an optional reporting form that really just serves as a template for institutions if their student athletes are required to report that information based on state law or institutional policy. I also cannot neglect the fact that there are several videos available to the membership that are, some are applicable for members across the association, regardless of division. And there is the one that is applicable to division two. And Jim Johnson, who is currently the director of athletics at Pittsburgh State University and the chair of our division two management council highlights the importance of this for division two. That's amazing. It sounds like there's a lot of resources, no matter, as you mentioned, whether you're a student athlete, compliance officer. So that being said, you kind of touched on this, but all this information can be found on NCA.org. Are there any other ways that the resources have been shared with the membership? So they have been shared in three mass emails, um, Salesforce emails that went out to our membership. And the resources have been put on .org intermittently. So when this first came out, there was a mass email at the end of June highlighting the information that was available at that time. There was a second release of information in mid-July. And then just earlier this month in August, there was another release of information and a mass email went out to our membership at that point as well. That's great. So we're constantly sharing, constantly updating. So that's really, really great information for our listeners to know. Can you please share a preview of the NIL resources that are in the works? Sure, I'm happy to do that. And unfortunately, I don't really have anything to highlight for you that is information that's under development, but our education teams in this space meet on a regular basis to dialogue about what would be important for the membership and our student athletes with the NIL interim policy. So I would encourage our listeners that if they have any ideas about educational resources that would be helpful to contact the academic and membership affairs staff. Great, and the good thing about NIL is this is something we're constantly learning about. So I have no doubt that if you ever get feedback, we'll be in the works in the future. And last but not least, what role did you have in creating the NIL resources? So Hayden, I actually played a very small role in the development of these resources. I provide support to just one of the teams at the national office that is a cross-divisional team in the development of these tools. And the important thing to note is that these resources went through several layers of review by our staff across the divisions. And I participated by reviewing the materials for its content before they were posted to .org. Well, that's great. And I'm a firm believer there's no small role. So thank you for all of your hard work. So thank you and Rob for joining us today and sharing insightful information on creating NIL educational resources on campus and the interim NIL policy educational resources available for the NCAA membership. Thank you all for tuning in today to NCAA's College Sports Conversations. I'm Hayden Gibson.